So are the world's economies engaged in a currency war? And what are the implications if this thing escalates? Well, I wouldn't say that we had a war stage quite yet, but we clearly see the contenders sharpening the swords here a little bit. Uh, there are a lot of tensions in the global financial system, and these need to be resolved uh, in one form or another. Uh, the key for uh, right now are the IMF World Bank meetings, the G7 meeting, and the G20 meeting to, in November. And uh, we, we believe that uh, on the back and uh, in the back hall, so, so to speak, um, we'll have officials talking about this issue. I wouldn't look for a major breakthrough but it's certainly going to be topic of conversation. What can they realistically do, Fred, though, to, to stop this war from breaking out? Well, there are really just two options on the table. Uh, either you allow significant exchange rate realignment in emerging market currencies or you impose capital controls. Uh, there's so much capital flowing into particularly Asian financial markets currently that it's very difficult for central banks to deal with that uh, mountain of money or the wall of money coming in. Um, but uh, politically, it's probably very difficult to engineer a massive realignment of currencies. So I suspect that we'll get a combination of uh, tentative capital controls and, and perhaps uh, really just not doing anything, which goes then towards fueling the emerging market bubble. But Fred, the reason that they need to, uh, they feel they need those capital controls is because the West is printing money as fast as they can get it done. So isn't the answer perhaps uh, for less of this money printing? I mean, isn't that at the heart of the problem? You had uh, the European Central Bank really standing its ground yesterday. Uh, we had Klaus Botter, who's a, a, an economist at Societe Generale, saying that Europe's really standing at the edge of the battlefield and allowing others to fire on it without doing anything. I mean, we had the, one, the Euro at 140 yesterday. Well, I think the Europeans are uh, certainly not signaling they're loosening monetary policy, and hence we get the strength in, in the euro. Um, but I think for the U.S., for example, the prime objective now is to put the U.S. economy on a sustainable path, and that may well involve quantitative easing, further monetary stimulus. And it's actually in the long-term interest of emerging markets as well that the Fed foremost fixes the U.S. economy and helps to, to fix it, and therefore we have no choice but to uh, further accommodate U.S. growth and the currency consequences that need to be dealt with in some form or another, uh, including combination of appreciation in emerging market currencies and perhaps even some form of, of reduced uh, inflows of capital, capital controls or regulatory measures that help to absorb the liquidity and prevent uh, bank lending in emerging markets from really fueling a massive uh, asset bubble. All right. Fred Neumann, Managing Director there and co-head of Asian Economics Research at HSBC.